Thank you for attending my presentation. My name is Mathieu Parento, and today I will be talking about the development of parallel CFD application using the Chapel programming language. So the presentation will go as follows. We'll start with a brief introduction of our research lab here at Polytechnic Montreal, and then we will talk about uh, the two different CFD applications that we have uh, developed using Chapel. And then we'll discuss a little bit about the performance pitfalls that we have encountered. And then uh, we'll be presenting some performance benchmark uh, that we did. And so we, me and my colleagues, uh, we are all members of Eric Lorando's research team. Eric Lorando is a professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering at Polytechnic Montreal. Uh, the main research activities of his uh, lab uh, is in the field of computational fluid dynamics with more focus on the development of multi-fidelity approach for aerodynamics and multi-physics simulations such as aeroicing and aeroelastic. And so if I can describe briefly CFD, uh, we are trying to solve the Navier-Stokes equations, uh, which are highly nonlinear PDEs. And so it requires uh, an iterative process with the use of very large sparse matrices. And so it does have a really high uh, computational cost uh, that grows rapidly with fidelity. And so this is the, the reason why the programming language uh, plays a, a critical role in the field of CFD because we need to achieve high performances in order to provide uh, practical applications uh, using CFD. And so this is why C, C++, and Fortran are generally the main programming language in the field of CFD. And you, with using MPI and OpenMP uh, for parallelism. And so this leads to the question of what do we want in a programming language for CFD? So we want productivity because the research field of CFD evolves rapidly and it is also a very competitive one. And so we need to be able to uh, have quick implementation of complex algorithm and being able of uh, extending those algorithms on distribu distributed memory as well. And obviously we need a fast implementation because of the high computational cost uh, of CFD. And so we need also portable and scalable uh, application uh, because often we need to, we are performing 2D cases on just a simple desktop for uh, quick development and verification, but then uh, we need to, to perform large scale computation for more realistic 3D cases. And so we need a code that is uh, portable to multiple hardware. And this is the reason why uh, we, uh, we chose uh, Chapel uh, for this, uh, for this uh, small research project. Uh, it's because the Chapel programming language aims to be every of those key elements presented here. And so in order to uh, explore the use of Chapel in CFD, uh, we've decided to do this in two parts. So the first part, we are simply taking an already existing uh, C code and we're just converting it to Chapel directly. And here, the objective is really just to see uh, how does Chapel compares to C for a very simple CFD code. And in this case, it is a 2D Euler structured code. And then the second part, um, we are uh, building an entirely new unstructured Reynolds average Navier-Stokes flow. And here the goal is to perform large scale simulations on distributed memory. And so for the 2D structured code, uh, like I said, we took an already existing code, which is called NS code. Uh, it is a shared memory only code and the parallelism is performed with OpenMP on a partition mesh. And so for the, for the, the chapel implementation, we just simply converted the code to chapel and we are using for all loops for the parallelism over the, the partition mesh. And then here we are presenting just a small comparison uh, between the two implementations. So uh, what we did is we've run 100 iteration on a simple uh, 2D airfoil uh, with 1 million uh, grid elements. And we are comparing the overall computational time in seconds. And so in red is the chapel implementation and in black is the C implementation. And, and as you can see, the chapel's implementation is actually at least uh, equal or even faster uh, to the uh, C implementation. 
And so following these results, we've decided uh, to go on and build a new uh, 3D unstructured RANS flow solver from scratch. And this new, uh, and this new code uh, was named Chapel Multiphysics Simulation, or CHAMPS because eventually we would like to perform multi-physics simulation. But as for this, uh, this first development, it is only a flow solver. And it is a typical second order finite volume approach. And we have implemented explicit solver and implicit solvers as well. And with the C interoperability of Chapel, we were able to uh, interface with the usual libraries that uh, we use in CFD. Uh, and so uh, the libraries that we use are the MK MKL library from Intel, the CGNS library, which is a library that we use for uh, to read and write uh, grid, uh, CFD grid and flow solution as well in uh, using the HDFI format. Uh, we're using as well the, uh, the MITIS library, which is a graph partitioning library. And finally, we're also using uh, PETC, which is a very powerful linear algebra uh, library. And so the design of CHEMS is really inspired by uh, what would be done in a typical SPMD approach uh, with MPI. And uh, by that, I mean uh, we are taking uh, the, the initial grid and we divide the grid into multiple zones. And typically, the number of zones is equal to the number of cores that we want to use. And then uh, we create one task per zone. And then every task is performing uh, the same uh, computation on their respective uh, elements. And the reason why uh, we chose this approach is that we still believe that it's, it's the most efficient approach for finite, finite value schemes, because unfortunately, in finite volume approach, there are some uh, computational loops that cannot be well parallelized. And so we still believe that this remains the most uh, efficient way of parallelizing uh, finite volume uh, code like this one. And so in CHAMPS, this is done in two steps. We have a first co for all loop uh, over here, uh, which creates one task per locale, and then every of those tasks will create additional tasks for the number of zones that is stored locally on that uh, locale. And then, so in the end, we have one task per, per zone and each of those tasks then enters the main iterative loop where all the computation is performed. So here uh, we're showing in just a simple grid that has been divided into four different zones. And so every zones, uh, will uh, be uh, so every zone will be owned by a different core and so every zone has uh, different uh, boundaries and obviously in a uh, in a grid that has been divided into multiple zones there are some boundaries that will be shared between different zones and those boundaries uh, are called interface uh, boundaries and this is where the communication uh, happens because all the elements along the boundary, uh, they require information of the, of the neighboring cell uh, that is on the other side, which uh, belongs to another zone and which could be stored on a different locale. And so we need to exchange these information. And this is implemented through the use of ghost cells. And so again here, the approach that we took is, again, what we would see in a typical SPMD, SPMD approach is that every zone uh, is allocating a designated array, um, which uh, will be filled with the values that need to be exchanged. And once every zone has filled their array, uh, they are simply copied directly to the other zone, and then, then the zone can use those new values to update the ghost cells. And then we can, and then we can go on with uh, the computation. And so, this is done in two steps and it needs to be uh, synchronized. And uh, this is why we are using uh, all locals barrier as we can see over here in the example. And so since uh, CHEMS aims to, to perform multi-physics simulation, uh, it needs to have the ability to solve different physical models that requires different computational grids. And so this is why we've decided to use uh, type aliases to 
enable that flexibility. And so, for example, if doing if we are doing a flow simulation, we have a designated type for the for the zone for a, a flow simulation, which with uh, which is called a mesh flow, for example, over here. And the mesh flow object is actually inherited from uh, the uh, the base class mesh, which contains all the basic information that any computational grid requires, such as the grid connectivity or the the node uh, coordinates, the node grid coordinates, and then the uh, the specialized uh, the specialized class then only implements what it needs to solve the physical problem. So for for the flow, for example, this would be all the flow quantities such as the density, uh, the pressure, and the the velocity. And we do the same for the boundary conditions. So we we are using type aliases as well to define those uh, boundaries. And basically, we have two different type of boundaries. We have physical boundary and interface boundary, which uh, are the communication. And so, for example, if a mesh flow uh, is used for a flow simulation, then the uh, the the, uh, the correct type is used for uh, the, the boundary condition that goes with a flow simulation. So for example, interface flow would be instantiated and physical boundary flow would be instantiated because uh, again, uh, different physical models requires different uh, f boundary conditions. And uh, so this structure really allows us to have a, a flexible structure that can be reused for any kind of physical model, and we and that flexibility would, will eventually uh, allows us to uh, combine different physical models to perform multi-physics simulation. And so, um, during the development uh, of these uh, two CFD applications, we came upon two different performance pitfalls. Uh, the first one is implicit parallelism. Because there are some operations in Chapel, like whole array assignment, that has uh, embedded implicit parallelism, and in a structure like ours in Champs, uh, where we are using all the available cores, uh, because we are uh, creating one task per zone, if uh, if the the if there is a whole array assignment left in, for example, the iterative process, it will cause some serious overhead. And so we really need to avoid the use of those operation inside uh, the iterative process. And, they can be, and those errors can be difficult to find. And the second one uh, is the multi-local overhead. And by that we mean that there's a noticeable overhead when we are compiling the code from a single local mode to a multi-local mode. And even though there's, uh, there's a, uh, many portions of the code that doesn't require communication, there's still unnecessary overhead that is, uh, that is added by the compiler. And this is where the local statement is really necessary to uh, improve uh, the performances. And so, again, in, our, in, in the case uh, of CHEMS in our structure, uh, the communication is really restrained to a specific part of the code. And so basically, we can use those local statements everywhere else in the code and making sure that the compiler is not adding unnecessary overhead. And in the end, uh, the use of those local statements is actually very useful because it allows us to have a better control of which part of the code should and should not have uh, communication. And uh, this is really useful uh, since we can avoid mistakes uh, that could cause uh, that could cause uh, significant overhead uh, because if it is uh, inserted inside a local statement, it will be flagged by the compiler. And so in terms of overall performances, uh, we uh, techni well, typically we are looking into three different criteria for CFD uh, software. We are looking into the computational time per iteration, uh, the scalability, and the convergence rate. And so the convergence rate uh, depends more of the implemented algorithms than, uh, than the hardware, but uh, it is still really a critical information on, on how, uh, uh, on what kind of performances the code can achieve. 
And so to analyze this, we've decided to use the, the common research model in high lift configuration. And so over here we have three uh, snapshot of uh, the volume grid that is used. And so uh, this is a wing in high lift configuration that you would typically see um, in takeoff and landing uh, for a typical transport aircraft. Um, we, we have chosen this configuration because still today, uh, this type of configuration remains a big challenge for CFD software because it, because it creates uh, complicated uh, conditions to solve. And so this grid uh, has 22 million cells and 10 million nodes, and it's actually a coarse grid for this type of configuration. And CHAMPS uh, has been compiled using uh, CHAPEL 1.19, which was configured uh, for InfiniBan uh, for GasNet because we are running on, a, uh, on Beluga, which uh, is a computer cluster with uh, a InfiniBan network. And the, comparis the comparison uh, is performed against SU Square, which is a well-known uh, open source CFD code that is written in C++ and MPI at Stanford University. And so even though CHAMPS and SU Square are solving the same uh, equations, uh, they are using different algorithms. So it's really difficult to compare directly one code to another. And so here really the goal is just to uh, see if CHAMPS is achieving uh, similar performances than SU Square on the same problem. And so on the left, we are showing the, uh, the total computational time in seconds to complete 10 uh, iterations of the flow solvers, of the flow solver. And so the solid line is CHAMPS and the dashed line is SU Square. And as you can see, uh, the, uh, the overall computational time is very similar between both codes. And again, uh, on the right, uh, we are presenting the speed up uh, between uh, for the for both codes. And again, you can see that it is very similar, uh, with the only difference that at the, at the higher number of cores, uh, number of cores of 640, uh, Chems has a slightly lower scaling efficiency. But other than that, uh, the Chems uh, Chems with a chapel are providing. Uh, really similar performances when compared to SU square. And finally here we are comparing the convergence rate. And so again, uh, here it's really difficult to compare one code to an another, uh, specifically when the, uh, so the solvers and the algorithm used are not exactly the same. But still we can see here that uh, the evolution, uh, so the convergence of the lift coefficient for CHAMPS, which is in black, uh, is actually uh, converging uh, slightly faster uh, than SU square. And so here we have the, uh, the total computational time in, uh, in minutes. And so we were actually quite happy uh, with those results since they, uh, since we are clean, since clearly Chapel is providing competitive uh, performances when compared to a C++ uh, CFD code. And so finally, uh, I just want to update those results with the latest uh, version of Chapel, which is uh, 1.22, because in the latest release, uh, Cray has made some first optimization for InfiniBand network. Work, for InfiniBand network, so uh, we were curious to see if uh, we uh, would have any uh, improvements in terms of computational time uh, with uh, the latest rece release of Chapel 1.22. And we're actually getting around 20% faster runs uh, with the latest release of Chapel. And so here is the, 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 same, the same graph as before, uh, but uh, comparing Chapel 1.19 and Chapel 1.22. Uh, and so you can see that we have around 20% faster run, which is amazing since we didn't have to do anything, anything to get those uh, 20%. So that's really great. And to conclude, uh, we are extremely uh, impressed how easy it was to um, to extend a, the a CFD code to um, to distribute to a distributed memory network. And however, it must be done with care, as uh, we explained with the, the performance pitfalls. And also, we were quite impressed with the, the, the productivity that we achieve uh, with the language. And since we, since we had a working version of the codes, uh, the number of features uh, 
that was added to the code is really uh, almost exponential. And this is clearly uh, because of the, the programming language that allows really quick and fast implementation of new uh, algorithms. And so in terms of performances, as you, as you saw, uh, the chapel delivers uh, really competitive uh, results when compared to C and C++ uh, applications. And we still believe that uh, we can improve uh, those numbers uh, as well. And so in terms of future developments, we're now looking into adding uh, new physical models as we, as we talked earlier. And so here we're, we're talking about a droplet model uh, for ice accretion and a structural model for aeroelastic simulations. And so over here, we're just showing you a simple uh, figure with uh, ice that has formed on the leading edge of the wing. And so basically, by adding a droplet model with a, the, the flow solver that we already have, uh, we, would, we uh, would be able to predict the formation of these ice shapes, which uh, is really dangerous for aircraft. And it is a, um, a critical simulation that needs to be performed for aircraft uh, certification. And so we believe that later this year, we'll be able to perform this kind of simulations. And afterward, uh, we're hoping to be able to perform aeroelastic simulation as well and the animation at the bottom here is just showing a, uh, a typical uh, uh, dynamic instabilities of the structure with the flow and so this is called a flutter conditions and this is a really really dangerous uh, conditions that is uh, difficult it is a really complex and difficult phenomenon to model but where we believe that uh, eventually, maybe not, um, maybe at the end of the year, uh, we'll be able to uh, to simulate. Uh, and so, yes. And finally, we'd like to acknowledge the, the great support we had since the beginning uh, from the Chapel team at Cray. Uh, a really big thank you to you guys. And so with that, uh, if you have any questions, uh, I'll be glad to answer them. Thank you.